welcome to End Evil Podcast. This is Chris Jansen. This show is dedicated to ending evil whenever and wherever possible. The End Evil Podcast is dedicated to the book, The End of All Evil by Jeremy Locke, a wonderful book that so simply describes these concepts of truth and freedom. And we're going to share tonight, we're, I'm going to start reading that book to you so that we can get it on on the podcast, recorded in video form. And it's a good opportunity for us to go over these wise words that have been written. The book, The End of All Evil, does really an excellent job of covering the ideals of freedom and truth and explaining in really simple words what the problems are that we're facing with humanity and what needs to happen to make things better for the future of mankind and for the future of human beings. So we're going to start going through that book, and I'm going to just go ahead and start right off today with chapter 1. The first part of chapter 1 is titled Freedom. Freedom. The definition of freedom is the infinite value of the human being. The definition of evil is the destruction of freedom. Everything that is evil teaches people that they have limited value. The second paragraph is called simple. Truth is always simple. All people recognize truth because all people are intelligent beings. It is the nature of evil to create artificially complex ideas. It does this to hide or obfuscate the freedom it destroys. If you remove the complexities and fears from your life, you will find a plain and beautiful truth. This truth is the nature of your worth. The Value of Man To understand freedom is to understand the value of a person. Everything that evil wants is to disguise and destroy your value. All authority is created by evil men to disguise your worth. To understand your own worth is to understand the nature of liberty. Evil. The crucial key for understanding our world is to understand the nature of evil. Evil challenges the value of people by denying them the opportunity to make their own choices, by denying them the chance to grow strong in learning and understanding. Freedom. While evil seeks to destroy or hide a person's worth, freedom shows humans their full potential and their full value. With freedom, people have loved, cured disease, removed hunger, eased labor, and lived in peace. With freedom, happiness is possible. Freedom is the exact opposite of evil. You Everything written in this book is written to destroy the ideas of culture and law. The lesson of this book is simple. Nothing on earth is more valuable than you. So I'm going to go back through these slides and we can have a little bit of discussion on these slides. This is an amazing book because it's got so much material packed in so tightly in one neat little package. I think this book, that's why I chose it for my podcast, because every time I'm looking for an idea for something to discuss or a new way to say things, I come back to the book and I look at what Jeremy Locke wrote and I find the words I'm looking for. I always find an appropriate quote. And I think these type of simple, concise words are really um, getting to the root of things and the the problems that we really need to deal with in the world, the most important problem 
is also the most overlooked. And that's just the basic underlying philosophy of why we do things and how we understand what it is that's going on around us. See, our interpretation is actually very important because we are so valuable. And that is one of the things that gets hidden and obfuscated. So let's start with this first subheading on freedom. The definition of freedom is the infinite value of the human being. Wow, just that right there is a handful to think about. The definition of freedom is the infinite value of the human being. One thing I've thought about is just how infinite and amazing the human body is and how amazing human beings are. If you've ever heard the story, I'm not really the best at remembering all the details, but there's a famous story told about the mile being run. And um, for many, many years, no one could break um, the record. And I don't remember how low it was. Let's just say it was three minutes. You know, no one could run a three-minute mile or whatever it was, this low amount until after many years someone manages to do it as soon as this person manages to do it within a year two three more people have managed to do it and that was after a long stretch of many years not being able to accomplish that feat so when people's mind began to realize oh this is possible all of a sudden look what happens you know we have this infinite value which is our bodies are uh, we don't know what all they can do we always discover new things Think about the Olympics it itself. How long would it exist if humans just were finite and we could only do so much? We'd, we'd make all the records and the records would be set and no one would be able to break them. That would be it. But no, what we keep finding in, in uh, our experience with humans is that just about anything is possible. Humans have this incredible ability to reach beyond what's been done before and to do amazing feats. And also with our minds, look at the different um, amazing technologies that have been created on this planet. Look at the amazing feats of engineering that people have managed to figure out over the years. There is really no telling just what can be done and just how far we can go with our intellect. I personally, in the last few years, have been, I bring it up on my podcast quite a bit, because it's made such an impression on me, um, the Iceman, Wim Hof, who can withstand very cold temperatures that I would have thought impossible for a human to handle. And he's managed to do it and prove to the world that we can redefine the limits of what we're able to do. And there's always been amazing stories around the world that are sometimes a little hard to believe. But when you find a story like that that's well documented and you can, you know, I could practice for myself his breathing technique and see the difference, it just shows that um, we've been given this amazing gift of our body and we really don't know just what it can do. We see people who can climb cliffs with no ropes and, you know, um, swim across large bodies of water and always these records keep getting broken like as I was describing before. So when we're born into this world, we're given this amazing technology that seems to have no limits. And so that's what freedom is, is this ability to move around. We have the ability to move our body around. We have the ability to think with our mind. We have the ability to communicate even, to um, transmit sounds, to create things. It's amazing. And so anything that limits that amazing gift that we've been given, we don't know exactly where it comes from. The universe, God, the creator, you know, we come into this planet when our eyes open, just trying to figure everything out little by little. And people try to fill you in with what they think and what they believe, but none of it's completely for sure. We have to go with our instincts and we have to learn what we can as we go. But it's very clear that as we're born, we're given this amazing gift because you can move your fingers and you can move your eyes and you can move your body around. So that's your gift. That's your freedom. That's what freedom is. That's our way of interpreting what it is. When you think of a tree, it doesn't have the freedom of mobility that a human has. It's stuck in one place. So what we have is very special and amazing. And so anything that tries to break that down 
or destroy that or limit that is evil because that's what we're using the word evil to describe is that which destroys or steals or takes away from the growth of life and the natural process that the creation itself, the universe, has brought about. So everything that's evil teaches people that they have limited value. So we have people, and what I've noticed, this is now my personal observation, when we get into dense living areas like packed-in cities, it's harder for people to recognize their personal potential and their personal value because there's so many other people around packed in tightly that it starts feeling like you're just a grain of sand and there's, you know, so many others that you must be insignificant. And when you look at how governments speak down to people and corporations look down on people, you feel so small and so petty in this world of big things and cars rushing all around, big businesses, all these things happening, you start to feel very small in the world. But when you get out in, in the middle of nature and you can see the views and you're by yourself and you're really thinking about all the amazing things you can do and see, that's when you begin to recognize how amazing it is to be an individual and to have this gift. Just because there's lots of other people that have it doesn't take away from the amazing value of it. And just that by itself is sort of the one most crucial fundamental things that I wish I could share with all of people, just how amazing and fantastic it is to be a human being and to have this ability to go out every day into the world and create things. And yet, why for some reason so many people choose to destroy, it's hard to understand. So simple. Most things, um, when it comes to morality and how we treat one another and how we treat the planet, are actually pretty simple. Things get overcomplicated by those who choose to overcomplicate things because that gives them an advantage. Because other people become confused and, and lost and not sure about, of themselves. Well, those who are hiding things and keeping information secret, those who steal from others can make things seem really complicated. And what we have is many, many generations of people that have been duped, fooled, and tricked into believing that they're not valuable. Think about the histories we've heard of, you know, times with kings and people living under various reigns of tyranny where they actually look to their leader as some sort of god. How many times has this happened through history? Where people risk their lives, go to war, all because of the whim of some tyrannical leader or, or the needs of a giant um, financial institution that require blood money. So people are confused that, that morality actually is you know, dying for others or, you know, fighting for your company, your country, and trying to convince you that all these uh, made-up entities exist and are more real than what you are, when the truth is, it's actually really simple. You have a responsibility to protect your own body and to commune with those around you. You have a responsibility to appreciate the freedom you've been given. And part of that appreciation is to defend your right and your ability to be free. And when anything infringes upon that ability to be free, it's harmful, it's evil. And things that are harmful and evil, have a, have a, um, you have a right to defend yourself against those things and to do what it takes to keep them from limiting your freedom. So truth is always simple. And that's why this book, I love so much, The End of All Evil, it cuts to the truth, and it does it in a simple way. It avoids a lot of the long explanations, and it gets right to the point. All people recognize truth because all people are intelligent beings. Now, these days, that feels kind of arguable that all people are intelligent beings. But we can agree, I think, that all people have the capacity to be intelligent beings. 
The trouble is many minds are poison. Many minds are distracted. Many minds are confused and damaged as far as that goes. You know, there are a lot of toxins in our environment in the modern age. There are many toxic ideas that are floating around. There are many distractions, everything from TV screens to video screens to um, indoctrination through schools and facilities and even um, in the medical realm. We have um, information that's funneled through specific filters to keep people thinking in a certain box. And anything outside of that box is now um, being called fake news or conspiracy. And so there's this whole world of things that the mainstream want to call conspiracy. And just this itself is this whole uh, overcomplicated way of thinking things that we can, we can um, separate ideas into true and not true before we actually do the work of scientifically taking these ideas apart and thinking about them and, and debating them and putting them through some sort of process, like a trivium thinking process. We want to overcomplicate things in the world where people are seeking to gain in a selfish way. It works out well for them to keep those around them confused, because if everybody understands the moral simple truth, it's very hard to steal from anybody because everyone defends themselves and their neighbors and the innocent because they understand the importance of not infringing on other people's right to appreciate the value of their existence, which is their freedom. So it's the nature of evil to create artificially complex ideas. So what is evil? Evil is the destruction of freedom. Evil are things that are taking away from that value of the human being being able to explore and dynamically change and grow. So what type of things break that down? Well, let's say, for instance, we can think of in our modern age these entities. I like to call a corporation an entity. It's not a being. It's not something that has its own mind and thoughts. It's something that's been created for a specific purpose. In this day and age, it's for money. I talked a lot about money the last two weeks and how that's tied in with greed and how it's become evil because of the way it's used. The fact that it's a scam in the modern way of being used because it's uh, doing harm to people by tricking them. Trickery is you know, creating a false world for people and convincing them that is the true world. So when we understand, for instance, a play or a movie and we sit down, we have an understanding that this play or movie is fiction and it's to be enjoyed as such. However, if someone were to show you a movie or a play and say, this is uh, real life and you were too young to know the difference, that would be um, cruel and unkind of that person to try to convince you something that's real, that's truly not real because they're giving you a false reality. And that's what we see happening in the media, and that's what we see happening in the indoctrination in so many um, of society's institutions, like the medical institution that's been totally corrupted in the last two years. Obviously, it's been in the process of being corrupted for much longer than that, but we can really see the outcome in current days when... People seem to think that one viewpoint shared by uh, all the news channels, that that must be truth, even though it's not debated, argued, or proven with actual facts and data, but just shouted in, in so many ways, and the opposition being shut down. So it does this to hide or obfuscate the freedom it destroys. Why, why does evil want to destroy freedom? I'm not exactly sure why this dynamic, but I know that it's a part of nature. Everything has a point at which it breaks down and it becomes waste in one way or another. 
everything that is born and grown and that exists on this world eventually withers away. It's a process. It's a change that happens. And perhaps evil is something that is part of the process of our existence as humanity. I'm not exactly sure of the big picture, not being the creator of all existence myself, but what I can know for sure is that the evil that men and women and humans do to other humans does not have to happen. We always have a choice. We can choose not to steal from others, and we can choose not to complicate things to purposefully take other people's money and energy as we talked about in the money episode, that money and energy are essentially the same thing. So by creating all these, this fiat currency, and by creating this demand for um, medicines that may, be, may not even be needed, these institutions that have been formed in the modern day are, are complications, are distractions from simple truths. So we can break these things down in our mind and be able to get down to the brass tacks of what really matters. And that is the value of each individual human life. And this is something we know deep down. When we hear a story of someone dying, children getting hurt, we, those of us that have empathy and are not psychopathic feel the hurt and we don't like to hear those type of stories. We like to seek, um, we like to seek harmony. And that's normal for human beings. But for some reason, um, it's very difficult for the mass of human beings to see how evil has lurked and snuck into places of authority and systems of control in such a way to so complicate our world that we, most people can't even see what's going on. So we've talked quite a bit about the value of man, and I kind of wish that it said value of human, because uh, obviously women are just as valuable as men. They're, um, every aspect of creation is valuable. To understand freedom is to understand the value of a person. So it's hard to learn to understand value when... We live in such a society that is seeking to do the opposite. When you look at the quotes of these, um, someone like Hillary Clinton, for instance, who will talk about the importance of the individual giving up their rights in order for what's best for the whole. You have this sort of talk that goes along with communism and socialism, and that's the direction that modern politics wants to take us because it's an easier way to control people when they don't see their own value and they think that the greater whole is more important than their individual life. And in many ways, it becomes more simple to give up your rights when you're sort of, um, how can I put it, comfortable. Often I imagine these, like a small Pomeranian dog that someone carries in their arms and pets. When when a human becomes pampered and um, they have all the things they need, you know, our fancy technology, food, easy access, just a button away, you know, you can have someone deliver you your food. When everything just sort of comes to you, you don't feel the need to go out and do anything of, of strong effort and take the initiative to make change in the world. So what the amazing tactic that's been used against humankind by authority is to get them into a place of submission through comfort. At least here in the Western world, that seems to be part of the strategy. Some people are so obsessed with their comfort and their lives that they're not willing to step out of the box and look at reality for what it really is, because it's easier just to go along with the flow. And what's that done is destroyed the value of the human being. And it's destroyed people's understanding of the, when it comes time to stand up for rights, when rights are being taken away. We see now how in the mainstream there's news coming out that the uh, 
the jabs that are being given out now are being mandated for anybody who works for certain um, statist entities. Now, in some ways, part of me thinks, well, that's what you get for being a statist and being involved in their statist programs. But it's really shocking that now people could be put in a position of not even having the choice to say no or lose their jobs. That's the scary world we're coming into. That's the Orwellian future we're heading for. And if people understood their value, that that type of thing wouldn't stand a chance because all people would unite together quickly and say, nope, anything that infringes upon our right as a human being is wrong. And we get to make our personal choice. And that should be just so simple, so glaringly obvious if people understood their value that there's no way that these type of mandates would ever get a foothold. However, because humans are so confused and have been distracted for so long, they're now falling for this trick. And that really has to do with authority disguising the worth of the individual and describing disguising the worth of many individuals. So we need to re-understand and re-educate ourselves of how valuable we are and what can be done with our thoughts and our mind when we set the intention. As I pointed out in the beginning of this show, this platform I'm speaking on didn't exist a year ago, but with the hard work and the intention of one man, he was able to inspire others and to get this project done, and now it exists, and now I'm here talking to you. So an idea starts with believing, and then it it proceeds with taking the initiative, and then you take action and things come into the world, and that's our amazing ability to create. We're co-creators of this universe. We're co-creators of this existence that we're experiencing, and it's our opportunity to grow. And, and part of that growth means defending rights. Evil is something that's trying to take away from that basic project. You know, from the time you're being born, you're working on growth. You're learning. You're evolving. You're learning how to move your limbs. You're learning how to stand up. Then you're learning how to move faster and balance in different ways. As you learn all these things, what type of human being would come along and try to inhibit that learning, to try to poison your body, to try to um, put something inside of your body that would slow you down or maybe keep you from having children? or maybe turn into some sort of autoimmune disorder in the future? What type of person would would want to um, inhibit the growth of human beings? A type of person who's obsessed with control. And that type of person has been bred in the human race by... For generations, there's been certain families that have encouraged that type of behavior. And that's what we need to stop and we need to see it for what it is. It's it's a bad it's a bad habit of humans to put up with this type of evil. Anything that denies us the opportunity to make our own choices is going down that path of evil. And it's purposeful why I chose this name of End Evil Podcast because it's strong words and it's a time we're living in where strong words need to be spoken so others can understand them. You know, if we just speak silently and quietly and say, oh, it's kind of bad and it's really not that good, it's really not getting the point across clearly of just how bad it is to limit people's choices and to limit opportunities. That is straight up evil, and that's the way we need to explain it to people so they understand. So while evil seeks to destroy or hide worth, freedom shows their full potential and their full value. With freedom, people have loved, cured disease, removed hunger, eased labor, and lived in peace. If you think about any of the amazing things that inspire us humans in life, whether it be art or, um, you know, there have been amazing developments in medicine And there have been amazing developments in in every area of our technology, our engineering. If only we could have those type of developments in our spiritual development, 
now we would be on a path that would help us lead to a better world where we could care for one another and we could live in a possible state of happiness. Happiness is something that occurs in a land of freedom. It's very difficult to have happiness, consistent happiness, in a place where freedom is being so dampered and so cut back and put down. So I like this last saying, freedom is the exact opposite of evil. You know, these thoughts, even though they're so basic and right in your face and normal, for many years I would have never occurred to me to think about these ideas in this way. So that's why I feel like it's very helpful to now repeat these words and rethink about them and get them um, memorized on the tip of our tongue so we can share them with others. So it's all about you. It's all about you and I it's taking a step forward in this life on our personal journey and sharing that out in the world and setting an example of people that understand their value. So that's really the lesson for the week from chapter one. Next week, I'm going to continue with chapter two of the end of all evil. But I wanted to share with you this little um, clip meme I found. Here, I'll put it on the full screen. I thought this was very interesting. Um, let me see if I can hear the sound. There's this picture going around of the CGI, yeah, of the whale crashing on the gym floor. You know, this, apparently even the technology exists to where you could be sitting in the crowd and feel the coldness and the wet hit you. That's how far they've come with this technology, uh, visual and physical stimulation to create a non-reality that is so close to reality that they can really fool people. And then you see someone here has compared it to this picture from 9-11 where the plane disappears into the side of the building right before the building starts to explode. And if you look closely at that picture, you can see how it was just total CGI fakery. So this is a cool, um, I found this on a social media site and I found it pretty inspiring and I thought it would be nice to share it with you folks, but I'm going to have to make it bigger so I can read it because the way my screen set up is making it a little difficult for me to read. Uh, let's see here. How can I fix that? Hmm. Ah, I see. Keynote. Yeah, well, I'll try to read it. To the so called elite, you are on notice. Let me make this very, very clear for you. No, I will not bow down. No, I will not submit to your dystopian, inverted, GMO, perverted, transhumanist agenda. Not ever, no matter how much ridiculous propaganda and fear you peddle right through all of your brainwashing institutions. I can see straight through it all, straight through you. It's not even hard. You are becoming ever more pathetic and desperate. I am letting you know I will stand and fight. I will resist. I will never comply. I will die on my feet. As an eternally sovereign, free soul, you will never take this from me. And I want you to know that there are millions of souls here on this earth right now, exactly like me. We are not only the resistance. We are what is coming next a new free world, and you cannot stop us, nor what is inevitable. And that says it comes from Ancient Warriors of Light, signed Ancient Warriors of Light. I found that to be powerful. And I think it's important for us to remember that we do have a lot to be um, excited about for the future those of us who are choosing to head towards the light and to work towards growth 
and towards making this world a place that is about freedom. So for those of us that are on that journey, take um, courage and take pride in your courage. And the fact that even though you may not win the small battle, the war will never be lost because freedom's on our side. And it's a gift of the universe. It's a gift of the great spirit of God, of whatever you want to call it, the all, the universal. And that's what we need to be aligned with. And being in alignment with that force has incredible power. And um, so take pride, take joy in freedom. And do not ever back down. And I thought this was a good opportunity, again, to um, define natural law. Again, these are words that can never hurt to say over and over until we know them by heart. What is natural law, if someone asks you? It's a set of universal, inherent, objective, non-man-made, eternal, and immutable conditions which govern the consequences of behaviors of beings with the capacity for understanding the difference between harmful and non-harmful behavior. A pretty simple concept, but not well known and not often talked about in schools or places of learning in the modern society, because this has been obfuscated, this has been hidden, this has been occulted, that there is a such thing of natural law. Even though we all understand it on an internal level, and we know we, with sayings like, what comes around goes around, do unto others what you would have done unto you. These type of thoughts we have and know that everything you do matters. But to put them all in together and to use these words to sort of signify that what's natural, what's already here before us and after us is this equality in a way, this um, evening, this reaction for every action that exists already in nature. So if you do harmful behavior, what happens? Is there an effect around you? Of course. There's no way to take actions without there being an effect around us. We can observe this in everything we do, and we can feel it deep within us when we consider these things. One question I wrestle with in my own personal life is looking at the outcomes and the difficulties of experiences I'm having. Sometimes I wonder, is this something that I caused or is this something I'm experiencing so I can learn? You know, and you wonder, why is the universe bringing me this problem? He, but when, when I look back through my life, I can almost figure out how each problem has in, wound up being an advantage for me. Sometimes it's hard to understand natural law in our personal life, in our day-to-day -day experience. Because there are so many things that happen that seem like bad, you know, but we're always looking through the lens also of our own greed and our own wants and needs. And that can be very distracting to be able to understand the big picture of what's really going on and why things are happening. So the universe takes its time and um, effects come about when they come about. They don't come when you expect them to. You know, it's like if you're at the ocean, standing at the beach, watching the waves, there is a rhythm to them. They do come in sets, but they're not 100% predictable. And just like the ocean isn't predictable, that's why it's so difficult to be a person that um, pilots a boat. You know, there's a lot to it. There's winds, there's oceans. So nature is always a good example for us to understand how the dynamics of things work. And so that's why, what is the natural law of the universe? Ask yourself this question. Meditate on this every day. It's a good way to get closer to reality and to get out of this fake world that's on the television. It's to look inside of ourselves and to discuss with others 
what are we doing about it? How are we changing ourselves, our individual experience? And that's really the goal of this podcast is to work at it from an inside and inner point of view as individuals changing ourselves and therefore changing the world. I also thought this would be a good opportunity to redefine the word anarchy, which so oftenly gets confused for meaning chaos, which it does not mean. And if you look here at the etymology of the word anarchy, this is from etymonline.com. It says, in the 1530s, absence of government, from French anarchic, or directly from medieval Latin, anarchy, from Greek anarchia, lack of a leader, the state of people without government. In Athens, used of the year of 30 tyrants, 404 BC, when there was no archon. Abstract noun from anarchos, rulerless, or from an, without. Archos, leader. Archon's a leader, basically. Without a leader is anarchon, anarchy. So I love to put the anarchy symbol on all of my toys and things, and whenever I have an opportunity, try to share with people what this word actually means, because words are important. They are a tool we have to experience reality. It's part of how we think, and how we think, and it it actually does change how we act and how we do. So it's important what words we use when we're thinking and what words we use when we're communicating, because that's how other people are going to interpret our meaning. And eventually that will affect reality that we experience. So a good question for yourself is, what is your purpose in life? Why are you doing the things you are doing? So many of us have to say, well, I'm just doing what I have to do to survive. And that sounds a lot like slavery, doesn't it? You know, if you're chained to a wall, what, what can you do really? You can try to find water and you can try to find food. That's all you can do, whatever it takes just to barely survive. But what happens in the experience of a being when you have food and you have water, those things taken care of, and you still have a semblance of freedom? You can walk around and move around without anyone limiting your travel. Then what? What do you do with this amazing abilities you have? Well... That's what I'd like you to think about. Why, why do we choose to do the things we're doing? Why don't we do things that are more constructive, more artistic, more community-oriented? Why don't we do things that are more based on improvement of, of the environment for the future, for the next generations? Why don't we build amazing structures that are healing centers, healing temples, and um, artistic fairs, and... Um, performances as far as the eye can see. This is how I imagine anarchy, a world of traveling from place to place and looking at the wonders of people's creation. I imagine an artistic revolution of people working on their arts and sharing with one another what they can do and being inspired and then taking that inspiration and building on it. You know, with this type of behavior in the world, we new new you know purse people born a children would grow up inspired to to do even better and more amazing art and more amazing ballet or dancing or jumping or whatever it is because they would go around the world and wonder looking at all the things humans have managed to figure out and do but instead we're kind of doing the opposite of that and really dampering the arts and dampening all the um, wonderful things we could be doing that would inspire one another. And instead, kind of trapping people in fear and keeping them in cages, which are now everybody's own homes as we go through things like quarantines and um, mask wearing to split each other up and keep each other separate and away from their community and ability to form what I'm discussing in an anarchic world. It's hard to form that when people are afraid of one another and they're afraid to breathe around each other. So what are you doing? You know, it's time to reset 
the world. It's time to reset your life and rethink your purpose. Know thyself. What are you here to do? What makes you feel valuable? Well, the deepest desire in humankind is to feel of value. And this is your opportunity. Well, you're still alive and you still have this amazing body that has so many possibilities and opportunities to get out there and do something of value that may help others, that may change the future. So get your words out there and get your actions in alignment with your principles and start doing something that matters. How, you know, how do you do that? Well, I would start with, if you want to change your life, if you don't like what you're doing on your day-to-day process, you need to start with the simple things, the small things. And one simple, small thing that we can all do on that account is to work on our own physical body and our own psyche. And there are simple practices, daily practices that can help with that. Many of us have practiced them from time to time, but getting more serious and self-disciplined is a way of telling the body you're ready to start taking action in this world. So I would recommend a morning routine. For some people, it may work better in the evening. For me personally, I like to get up every morning and do my breathing and do some exercise and do a little bit of centering. So if you can think of everyday practices that will lead you forward on your spiritual path, that will help you know yourself. And it will help tune your body and your mind in such a way that ideas more easily come to you. When you look at the pictures of how the chakras work and the alignment of the chakras, you can see that, you know, the body is similar in many ways to machines. Machines are based on the original machine, which is the human body. And it does have a mechanical nature to some extent. If you line things up properly and power up all the important centers of of energy, then you can have this amazing uh, energy that flows out from you. And You can receive almost like an antenna. It's like tuning into the right station, tuning into a radio station when you get it right in the right place and you actually hear all the sound very clearly. Well, that's what you can do with your body. It has the ability to do that. I would highly recommend breathing practice as one way to start working on this process if you have not already. Another big realization in my life, which is difficult, And I still struggle with because it is important to be happy whenever you're possible. You want to be happy. Many people think of that as the goal in life. I have some argument with that because being happy is a result of doing the right thing and being in the right place at the right time and making the right choices. In the Bible, um, Jesus was quoted as saying, not peace, but a sword. He said, Do not suppose that I have come to bring peace on the earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to turn a man against his father, a daughter against his mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, a man's enemies will be the members of his own household. Those are strong words, scary words of people turning against their own family. But that's the times we're living in now. We see where these subjects that have become so toxic and created so much division and argument between people that when you just simply speak your truth in this day and age of censorship and abundant evil, people will want to censor you and take you out of their life, even to the point of splitting up families. We've seen a lot of that in the last year. And... um It's because truth is belligerent. Truth doesn't care. It is what it is. When we're all heading down the wrong road and we hit a bump and everything falls out, it's time for us to realize we've been heading down the wrong road and it's going to hurt a little bit. So it's important to recognize that on the path towards truth and self-development, there's going to be some bumps in the road and some things are going to hurt. And you're going to have to go through some difficult times. And I think that's a lot of the main reason why so many people do not want to face that reality. So we go on creating our own prisons in our minds and in the external world. A quote by Samuel Adams. 
a general dissolution of principles and manners will more surely overthrow the liberties of America than the whole force of the common enemy. While the people are virtuous, they cannot be subdued. But when once they lose their virtue, then will be ready to surrender their liberties to the first external or internal invader. Unluckily, that's the road we've gone down. And now we're in the state where some people think that um, agreeing with the majority or agreeing with the authority is the only way to go. And that if you have a contrary opinion, you must be wrong. And to me, this just is reminiscent of the Borg from Star Trek, where they say, uh, you will be assimilated. Agree with us or be silenced. We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. And that is the techni technotronic uh, agenda that is being rolled out around the world, which is replacing humans in so many ways with technology. We see it in everything from the grocery store checkout to uh, Taco Bell, where you talk to a computer instead of a human being many more often than not these days. And it has been being rolled out since I was a child, this change. And it's because for those in positions of authority or those who are power hungry, the more that they can um, combine humans with technology, the more they can control humans. Because the actual natural law is built into our biological beings, it takes an abnormal technological change to kill that natural spirit to fight back and to, to defend itself and to think freely and to want to do something different. So you can see how obvious it is when evil tries to clamp down on natural law by, by putting a box around it and by um, partitioning every little part of nature and claiming it and inventorying it, giving it a name and putting it in a culture and creating this fake reality. And so what I would say is some things are worse than death, and that is becoming like a test tube matrix being that is just being fed upon for your energy. And that's pretty much the direction which humanity is going. It's important to remember that mistakes are opportunities. Choices are the essence of freedom. And without the opportunity to make mistakes, we are all slaves. Mahatma Gandhi said, freedom is not worth having if it does not include the freedom to make mistakes. The connection to life and the connection to nature is our connection to love and God and growth. All things are interconnected. And that is the tree of life. And that is the true story. And those of us who can come into alignment with nature and find balance and harmony will be full of life-giving energy. And that's our job with our time. That's what we can do to make a difference. That's how we end evil. So real quickly, let's go over the seven principles of natural law, which are the hermetic principles, the principle of mentalism, correspondence, vibration, polarity, rhythm, cause and effect, and gender. I recommend you head on over to endevil.life, hit the donate to end evil tab, and get yourself an end evil shirt. That's another path you can take to help spread the word out in the world and to help this project move forward and to work on freedom for humanity and for yourself. It's going to take all of us working together and taking the initiative. So do something. Thanks for coming. We'll see you next Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, the And Evil podcast.
Bands are stressed, Luciani, Joe, Ovid, Duvois, Martinez, Mubutu, Ozu, Bokia. The list goes on and on, America. Yo, once upon a time, it was all about the crime. Now, somehow, it's all about crime. Like we're all doing time. And yeah, we keep little prisons. I don't understand what y'all think that you're getting for your money. It's funny how we set up priorities. Game picks to oppress the poor and minorities. The biggest criminals all get reelected. You're naive, but somehow I expected more from the self described land of the free. But life has a price, freedom has a fee. Some of you might say that I'm unrealistic, cause I can't. And make these with the system sadistic. You might have missed it if you weren't paying attention. The American gulags and definitely tensions from a strike resemblance to something we should be for. That's the been fun since the Second World War. Pinochet, Franco, the Shah, Batista, Diem, Musharraf, Salazar, Marcos, Noriego, Trujillo, Hussein. Funded by a government, killing in a name. Most things are very simple. Less than complex, it's full black and white. It's all context, take black and white. Why is some more always opposites? More productive to focus on stopping the cycle of violence. Intimidation, we define each other by our color, nation, station in life. We love our religion instead of understanding that the world we all live in is big enough for all of us. Makes your room, no excuse for the way a few nations consume most of the world's wealth while millions of stars like Heads don't call, but your property is theft. We don't own this earth. Governments are just gangs fighting over turf and the mafia, military, industry, and war. The thin red line between the rich and the poor. Franco, Cedra, Cereza, Fog, Hassan, Papa Doc, Cordoza, Papadopoulos, Pol Pot, and Chung Hee. All butchers funded in the name of liberty. You tell me, does that sound like democracy? You'd have to be a zombie not to see the hypocrisy. Cancel for freedom by funding tyrants. Free speech isn't free if it sounds like silence. Why is it news that Paris Hilton's drunk driving? It's not news. War machine is thriving. People solving in the streets only if you make the back page. Some celebrity sex scandals all the way. They said to send a separatist and pieces of idiotic people falling for this ish. So idiotic, but then all government isn't all government. It ain't to the rich, you would not just pay the rent, they sell endless war, endless fear, endless destruction, but the end is near, no matter how many crimes they commit in name, liberty is reborn like a phoenix from the flame.